It's like, you know, why wouldn't they make the spanner wrench like this wide rather than this wide? It probably works for all the Miatas. Because usually... Oh, is this a Miata tool? Yeah. yeah. We're working on a Corvette with a Miata tool? They're like the same thing. They're both race cars. <laughs> I think your Miata's missing some cylinders. Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning, where we look stupid so you don't have to. Today we are installing lowering collars on the C8 Corvette. Technically, we already installed jack pads because the jack points are pretty far apart, but so our, our, our quick jack technically doesn't reach those, but uh, I think we're gonna send it anyways. We're gonna try. Charlie said he's, he's done this before, so <laughs> we're gonna trust him. Oh yeah, so so uh, if you don't have the the lift system, you actually have adjustable coilovers front and back. But with the lift system, you have to install these lowering collars in the front, and then you can adjust the back to match it to lower the car if you have the lift system. Otherwise, you just you just twist some collars front and back on the regular ones. All right, so once you have the the guard out of here, there are three 13 millimeter nuts on the top of the uh, one there. You'll take all those out except leave one partially threaded. Actually, you can take them. You can take them all out because the uh, there's enough tension on the arm down here that it's not going to drop. So we'll take all of those out. We will undo this harness. We're going to move these brake lines out of the way. Move those guys over. Pull that up. We'll get this. So you're going to need a drain pan. The uh, car uses the brake fluid for the lift system. So we'll drain this brake line. Pull them aside. Hit this 21. 11 millimeter on the brake line. at 21. Alright, so now we want to try to snake. Because you seem totally free from the top. There we go. And the connector is off. I think our pins were already, the purple thing are in line. So what you do is you get a pin in there and then you press lever it upward. And you should be able to pull. All right, so um, you're gonna have to get the connector out to give you a deep pinning tool, but I freaking I can't even figure out how to do it. So this ended up getting mangled. We're gonna cut them and then cut the other side and do bullets. There's a purple thing that you're supposed to slide over until the slots line up with the pins, and then I think you can just push the pin out. But I think since I was expecting this to have a little spring tab here, which it does, you're st I was thinking that you'd have to get in there and then push that down and then pull, but I think you just slide the purple thing over in line and then push the pin through. But we'll have to replace those connectors because I am a dumb, a dumb dumb. So we will get this off, this off. And then we're going to compress our spring. We're gonna mark where that lines up here. And then we're gonna mark where this lines up here. This is stuck together. 
so this part doesn't matter. But you just want to make sure that this ends up in line with the, the lower control arm and then this is going to need to line up with the body of the car basically. So these all need to go back together in roughly the same orientation. Actually we need to know this as well. Right there. So we'll compress this, pull this nut off, pull everything out, replace this collar with one that goes lower, which means we should make this line further down because the collar is going to start covering up this. Now, some companies recommend cutting this bump stop. Um, we already cut the other side, and then I saw a comp company mention that this bump stop was actually designed for the cars that are already lower, so this bump stop should be fine if you leave it uncut. Um, but we're gonna cut it just so we're symmetrical. You can whack this off like that, and then you take that collar out and slide our lowering collar on which, as you can see, brings the perch for this much lower. Put these bump stop back on. Our spring in the retainer. All right, we're gonna try sneaking this in. You wanna make sure you have your top hat and your lower control arm spot lined up. That's in there. Mag rag sensor wire. We go. Jeez, no wings. Get those nuts back in, put it on the end of a magnet, and then uh, twist her down. And it's still on your magnet. I thought you were going to do something that was going to work. All right, so once you get the collars into the front, you're going to have to come to the rear, which just has uh, adjustable coilovers. So we'll have to get this plastic sleeve off, which requires two flathead screwdrivers. Charlie will demonstrate here flawlessly, I'm sure. Yeah, I won't wreck anything. It's a beautiful day. 60 degrees. Spanner wrenches. These are really nice ones. Yeah, those came with my VMAX Extreme coilovers from Flying Miata. Check out that install video. Okay, so um, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I gotta do this one on the bottom first. It's like a locky collar. That one, but you know what we're gonna do? Just in case. I just like to kind of mark where things are. Just in case we go back to stock. Yeah, like that's ever gonna happen. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen either, but it's just nice. Uh, <laughs> makes me feel good. We were kind of hard on this collar, yeah. We were kind of hard on that, taking that off. Yeah, that uh, brake clean. How about a rag? Oh, that did work better. Tech tip of the day, use some brake clean to clean your, your threads on your collar. All right, so on the other side, we left one thread showing. So 
right there. We left one thread, so we're gonna. That's technical. Knuckles, non bloodied. Let's see how it goes. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. See the first problem? Yeah, that whole sleeve is kind of spinning around. All right, so now we're gonna do the tape this time. Oh, we are? Yeah, no, we're gonna do the tape because we do believe that helped. I was just hoping maybe it would uh, be tighter. Dan uses the toughest tape in the world, Gorilla Tape, for this. Check out the link in the description. You can find that at Menards.com. Menards, Menards.com, visit your local Menards now. 11% off this week. Well, it depends on what week you're watching this, I suppose. Seven years from now, somebody's comment. So, I found that I didn't need to use the... What's this thing called? Channel Seven. lock. Okay. Plumber's tool. If I'd use the tape on the other side, that might just stick it enough. We're gonna try that again. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Uh, did you get those threads clean? Yeah, there's a kind of same threads. The nice thing is, it gets easier. In a couple easier. Of years, this will be done. <laughs> it gets easier as you go with them, too. I thought you cleaned it already. No, the dirt, it's spinning right oh, the friction okay. there. It's the dirt in a different spot. Yeah. Oh, see right there? That was a close one. That was close. I even hurt my back of my neck a little bit on that one, just... Just trying to bust his knuckles open. <laughs> bust my knuckles open. Hit myself in the face with this banner wrench. This is gonna be a good way to just knock that back. Hey, are these cars fiberglass? Yeah, I guess they are fiberglass, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, Corvettes are all fiberglass. I think they've always been fiberglass. It is fiberglass. Is it? Hmm? That's a little something you didn't know about Corvettes, huh? Doesn't uh, doesn't sound any different than plastic. Well, what's the difference between fiberglass and plastic? Fiberglass is, is fiberglass is a form of plastic, isn't it? What year did they first make Corvettes? Do we know that? Comment below. Fifty-three. What is it? What is Share, like, Corvette? and subscribe. Fifty-three, fifty-four. I did hear they're gonna redesign the uh, center console of this car. Really? People don't like all the buttons. Who's people though? Yeah, everybody with a computer has an I mean, opinion I like, nowadays. I like physical buttons. I just don't know that all of them in a row like that, where you guys spend 12 minutes figuring out where anything is. Yeah, this car's uh, made for a 60-year-old man. They want buttons that are. Says exactly what's going on. They don't want computer screens. They want knobs for you know volume and. They want the cricket phones. You know, I like my jitterbug. Jitterbug, thank you. Yeah, cricket <laughs> jitterbug. Ah, uh, this is, was the other side this bad? <laughs> Can I swear? Frickin' A, yes. I took two breaks on the other side. That was when I stopped helping Charlie <laughs> and started looking at other stuff, because I was like, oh, I don't want him to ask me to do this. <laughs> but I did, I took two breaks. You're making it look easy though, you know. It makes you feeling better, it'd be harder going the other way. Back uh, up. Oh yeah. Because you're working against gravity. I thought you were just saying like, uh, the other side was... Well, if we had a proper spanner wrench, actually, Kyle, it would be easier and easier. Because this thing, see the throw on it? You can quite adjust there. the throw. Like, it's as big as it's as big as it can. Oh, you want a bigger one. Uh, you really bust a knuckle. Right here. <sighs> All right, so how much did we drop it? Okay, Dan, read the, read the stat again, the right front. Right front, 27 and one quarter. Okay, it's 27 and a quarter. We are now... 26, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be a little generous, but I'm gonna say 26 and a half. That's three quarter of an inch. We are 28 and a half on the rear. Now we are 27 and 7 eighths, which would be 5 eighths of an inch lower. Oh. And everyone's saying Chevy has great engineers that set the ride height correctly. You're wrong. Hey, now we're scraping the driveway. Yeah, I'll see that little love cap. How could Chevy know better? Well, well they're millions of dollars in engineering. They can't know. They can't know better than us. Then three idiots in a garage. Three idiots in a garage. <laughs>